Today we've got the 2019 and 2020 Honda CRV. It's refreshed for 2020 with some changes on the outside and on the inside and even under the hood. I'm going to show you everything that's new and hopefully you learn a couple new things that you maybe didn't see in some other videos. Let's get started. Real quick, before we get started, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to Honda Cars of Rockwell. That's where I'm at right now. They were super generous to take both of these CRVs and let me show it to you. So if you're in the DFW area, please be sure to check them out. I'll put their information in the description below. These are both the touring models, but I'm going to tell you the differences on some of the lower trims as well. So starting on the LX model, the price is going to go up from the 2019 to the 2020 model, $600. With that LX model, you're going to get Honda Sensing Standard, which has been standard on these top trims and the EX and up, but now the base LX is going to get that as well. And there's different names for each manufacturer, but Honda Sensing uh, includes collision mitigation with forward collision warning, plus pedestrian detection, road departure mitigation with lane departure warning, and lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow, and their frontal crash prevention actually got a superior rating from the IIHS. And of course, there's still some other available features like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic monitoring, and automatic high beams. Now, one of the most apparent obvious changes is the way that these two look in the front. There's a refresh, and as you can see, they look a little bit different. Let's go over those differences. All right, so starting out, let me quickly show you this 2019 model of this Touring. As you can see, one of the big things here is the chrome bar running across We've got oval halogen fog lights down below, still LED lights up above, but as we go ahead and move over to this 2020 model, one of the big changes you'll notice right away is that black bar running across the grill. Uh, they did a, a blackout grill here. You've still got kind of that honeycomb pattern down below as well. The bumper is redesigned, and you can see those broad openings by the headlight, that trim piece that kind of runs down on the bottom. Still the same honeycomb at the bottom, but it's black down there instead of the kind of silver looking color at the bottom on that one. One of the changes here is that these fog lights are now LEDs and they're just circular instead of oval. The EX, EXL, and Touring get those LED fog lights and we still have the LED headlights up above and Honda says that they actually updated the LED high and low beams on the Touring model. But the sad thing is the rest of the trims still have their halogen headlights, which, you know, in today's day, uh, a lot of vehicles are going with LEDs, at least on more than one trim, but just LED headlights on the top trim. And then you can see they still have the LED daytime running light that kind of runs down and wraps around that headlight. And then you've got that LED turn signal, which looks pretty nice. One addition to these 2020 models is this blue color, the Asian, or I don't know how to say it, something blue metallic that comes from the Civic, as well as Sonic Gray Pearl and Radiant Red Metallic. Another change is going to be the wheels. So you're looking at these 18 inch wheels on the Touring model right here. They've been the same for a few years now, or for a couple of years, and as we go ahead and look over here, they changed the wheels. These are not only a different design, but they're 19 inch wheels. So you've got larger wheels on here, same with tires though, uh, but a different spoke design and just larger wheels overall for the Touring model. Now the EX and EXL get redesigned wheels as well. These are the 2019 inch wheels. They're 18 inches as well. Now those are the 2020 model wheels for the EX and the EXL models. So they're redesigned, but they're still 18 inches. What do you think? Which one do you like better? The sides of the vehicle are pretty much unchanged except for the wheels. You've still got the same trim pieces. This is the 2019. And then over at the 2020, pretty much the same, same chassis, same body style, same dimensions, just like that. Now on the back of the 2019, this is the same design that they've been using. A couple things to notice is the clarity of the taillights, the trim down at the bottom, and those exhaust pipes down there. So I'll show you the difference on the 2020 model. The 2020 model gives us some smoked taillights. There's still the same LED bars that run through those, but they're smoked. They're kind of darker, uh, which I think looks pretty sleek. Even this chrome bar running across the back is a darker chrome as well, which fits the darker taillights. You still get the hands-free uh, opening on this Touring trim. And then you have a different, kind of a darker trim piece right above those exhaust tips, and those exhaust tips are different than the last one. You see how they're flattened out as opposed to the round ones? Give you a better look at the chrome color on those. The top Touring model still gives you the same foot activated function. If you weren't familiar with that, that carries over from the last generation as well. And then once we get back here, this is a height adjustable tailgate. 
that continues to be the same. We still have the incandescent light bulb back here. You can pull the seats down with those handles. All of that is the same. Nothing changes with the rear cargo area here. Uh, that is still a movable load floor, which is convenient and nice to give you more space or a nice flat load floor. But overall, a really functional cargo area that has continued to stay the same and I have no complaints with that. Now these are the seats of the 2019 model. They are unchanged, but I'm gonna show you the gray leather that we get right here. And now on the 2020 model, the seat shape is the exact same. They're the same power numbers, uh, same adjustments and all that, but now you've got the black leather here, which you can still get on the 2019 as well. So right now I'm showing you the 2019 interior. This has been the same for the last few years. Same with the screen. You guys are all pretty, probably pretty familiar with this, but keep in mind the way that this center console looks, all the buttons that we have on here. So one complaint about this center console is it's a little bit of an awkward space for your phone. You've got a power outlet right there. The cup holders have worked fine. I've enjoyed this center console space because it's pretty spacious. We've got a couple charging ports in there and 12 volt power outlet. You can open it up and have a lot of space in here. You can move this forward to have that and have a little shelf or you can even remove it. Okay, now we are in the 2020 model and things probably look pretty similar to you until we get down here. In fact, one thing to note right there is that we now have the auto stop start button uh, on this Honda CRV. So if you're not familiar with that, when you go to a stop, if your engine's warm, it will shut off. And then once you let off the brake, it will start. You can turn that off or on with that button. You don't have that on the 2019 and lower models. We have the same shifter, same buttons here, but the hybrid gives you a push button shifter instead of this one. And then down below, this is where the main changes happen. So as you can see, there is a flat pad right there with a couple of charging ports. You have one that's a little bit faster, not as fast as some, and then a normal charging port. So those are repositioned instead of inside the center armrest. The wireless charging is available only on the touring model. It's standard on there. Otherwise you'll just have a pad. And I think this works better to at least like put your phone, um, even if you don't have the wireless charging. Same cup holder setup right there. And then right here, this is where one of the big changes comes. So this looks the same, but let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Look at that. You've actually got a whole flat area right there. You can move that back. So you kind of have an open area and then still a little shelf, or you can flip it up out of the way. So what do you prefer? Do you prefer this or the other one? And then there's one 12 volt power outlet right there. So there's still a 12 volt power outlet right there. No USBs in here. And then the two USBs right there. Another thing to look at is this trim right here on each side of the center console that you don't get in the 2019 and lower. Another change is the leather steering wheel is still on the EXL model and up, but now the Touring model gives you a heated steering wheel standard. I believe that was maybe an accessory available before, but now heated steering wheel is standard on the Touring model. The center display is the same as it was last year, no changes with that. Some of you may be wondering, but this is still the same infotainment system, same speaker setup, but one change is that for the radio on the EX model in EXL, you now get HD radio, which didn't used to be on anything except the Touring model. Another thing that I was wondering if Honda would add would be a panoramic view. You do not get a panoramic view, not even available, but you still get their three different backup cameras at different angles. Another question some of you may have is, is there a panoramic roof available? No, there's not. There's still just this regular moon roof. And then another thing that I was wondering if they were going to add would be ventilated seats, but ventilated seats are still not available. You have the three tier heated seats like you used to. And just to give you a quick look in the back, you still have the same AC vents and charging ports on the EX trim level and up. The seat back pocket is the same. There's still a ton of space back here. These seats can recline. They are fairly comfortable. They don't slide back and forth, however, but you have to use a button up on the top of the seat in order to recline them. The center armrest remains unchanged. And one feature that I am surprised we didn't see added, kind of like the Accord, is a heated rear seat option. But we don't have it. Now one of the big changes in the powertrain department is the addition of a hybrid. Neither of these have the hybrid, but the hybrid model will be coming out soon and I'll get a video to you as soon as I can. Another thing is the LX model, the base model, now gets the same engine that's in these touring models. 
The LX used to get a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated engine with 184 horsepower and 180 pound feet of torque. But now every single trim level, standard, no options, gets this 1.5 liter turbocharged engine that you're probably familiar with that gets 190 horsepower and 179 pound feet of torque. So when it comes to daily driving, the biggest difference between a naturally aspirated and a turbo engine is the responsiveness. There can be a little bit of turbo lag, but you get some power, the torque curve is flat and early, so it doesn't take a whole lot of throttle to get some boost. Personally, I would have liked to have seen the 2.4 liter stay or at least be optional on some trims, but the 1.5 liter turbo is standard across the board. Both of them stick with the same CVT that they have been using. No changes with the transmission, but there is a change in miles per gallon, believe it or not, with the 1.5 liter turbos. So with front wheel drive, that 2.4 cylinder on the base model would get 26 city, 32 highway, whereas the 1.5 liter turbo would get 28 city, 34 highway, which is a pretty nice bump. The difference now, for whatever reason, maybe there's a weight change or something like that, but all wheel drive models actually lose one mile per gallon on the highway. So it's 27 city, 32 highway instead of 33 highway compared to the 2019 models. Interesting. Now, if you want to see a test drive of how these engines, the turbo performs driving wise, I do have a review of the 2019 EX model. I'll put that in the description where I do a test drive. I can't drive these because they are sold. So what do you think of the changes? Would you go for the 2019 model or the 2020 model? And which trim level would you get? Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see a longer, more detailed review on this or the 2019 EX model, be sure to look in the description below.